All right, Dwayne. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for thank you for your service. <laughs> no, th thank you thank for, you for my <laughs> thank you for um, uh, well, thank you for providing IT services to the services. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, but uh, I want to thank you also for uh, taking me to my first Army Navy surplus store in the city of San Diego. Deputized. Uh, pretty much <laughs> um, and it was actually it was sort of a it was an eye-opening experience it was mostly a good experience but some of it was um, awkward the only reason I say it's awkward is because I've also watched a lot of stolen valor right videos yeah. and it seems to me the stolen valor community is becoming extremely vigilant right uh, overzealous I would say about um, I would, I would say this, that you've noticed that they actually have children's um, camo gear. Yes. So, it's, yeah. and then the other thing, how the second thing that you, you mentioned was, um, if this is being sold to the public, yeah, then it's like, that means they're going to wear it, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, what's the point of selling gear, right? Uh, um, clothing and other apparel correct if you're not going to wear it right it doesn't it, it, it's like do you need you don't sell clothing that with, you're not going to wear that you're not going to wear and it's not like the government is issuing uh, certifications or licenses to to wear the stuff that you bought on a retail environment a retail uh, center and so this it, it, the the whole um uh, stolen valor situation it becomes it's already murky from the get-go in my opinion right it's already a a, 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 a tough uh, line to distinguish between stolen valor legitimate stolen valor and just some guy buying a product right because um, I understand the real stolen valor pretending to be a military member and gaining some kind of profit or benefit from from that fraud, right. but you know when when you wear a, a military uniform, those were actual legitimate yeah. military they uniforms. Even had, um, there were some badges that was sewn in of who right. actually had it before. A rank, name, yeah. service, right? Mm -hmm. It's it, that was the it was the real deal. And as you mentioned, if those, if uh, those uniforms could could talk, I mean, imagine the stories behind right. each one. Exactly. You know. So, the government. I mean, that's the thing. You know, people buy people buy this stuff. I mean, we we saw the the Marine Corps, you know, dress blues, right? Yeah. And you know, uh, and here's the thing: if if somebody wore that Marine Corps dress blue in public. And just, yeah. uh, just, the, just, just the dress blue, the top portion, right. and nothing else, and wore like jeans and sneakers, yeah, right? it'd be kind of weird, but... It'll be weird, but yeah. not only that, uh, in, this, in, in today's environment, you'll have Stolen Valor vigilantes screaming at the top of your lungs, right. Stolen Valor, what's your MOS? Show me your cat card, right? Right. Um, and I understand that. I understand that uh, that emotion being triggered. I understand the uh, how how uh, active duty and and veterans would be offended by by that, especially because it, it, you know if you're going to wear the uniform, you got to wear the uniform correctly at the very least. Right. But here here's where it, it becomes a gray area. Somebody is right. selling that to that person you know there right. somebody is selling it to the retail business and then that retail business well the government is selling it right right, right? i mean who, the question is well who's selling this stuff who is who is who has the access the authority to sell this stuff to grab this stuff from actual legitimate military property right. and then sell it to the retail public because these guys that are buying this stuff they're not breaking into the military bases and stealing them. They're not breaking into the barracks and, and right. stealing them from individual uh, or, service members. Or killing the service members Ex and taking it off a dead body. Right? Exactly, right. They're not doing that. Yeah. 
it's being sold through legitimate official channels. And the question again is who's selling it? Well, it's the government, Uncle Sam, right? right? right. So the weird thing about, well, the, this, this awkward gray area with Stolen Valor is that the people, the vigilantes are attacking the lowest part of the supply chain. They're going downstream. Yeah. But when you go, when you attack downstream, you only address the end result. You only address the symptoms of stolen valor. In order for the vigilantes and the whole vigilante community to be more effective, they need to go upstream, right? Upstream, up the supply chain, at the root of the problem. And here's where it becomes awkward. What is at the root of this stolen valor situation? It's the government, you know, because if the government didn't sell the surplus, we wouldn't have this problem. Right. We wouldn't have this problem, or it would be much harder for um, for that homeless dude who is claiming to be a veteran to, you know, ha have that uniform and write on a piece of cardboard, "Homeless veteran, please help." So that's where it becomes murky. And I think before you yell stolen valor every time you see camouflage styling, I think it, it, it pays to kind of step back and look at the context and, uh, and right. consider the, the broader picture. Is it really stolen valor? Is that guy profiting off of a fraudulent military service yeah. or is this guy just does he just want to wear BDUs in public or know? they got the, that particular uniform from a Salvation Army or a thrift store you know some homeless person paid a buck for it or something you know exactly we, we went we Especially went the peacoat the name yeah peacoat. we went downstairs into the basement of the um, the surplus store that we were at and uh, uh, they had a lot of use. They stuff. had tons and tons. Of, I mean, just racks and racks of uh, used uh, military uniform from all branches, uh, especially Marine Corps, Navy, and Army, Coast Guard. and Coast Guard, and Coast Guard. So everybody, everybody was uh, represented, and I think even the Air Force, right? Uh, lot, Air Force, yeah. A lot of Air Force um, and Air Force ROTC. That's true. I. Yeah. I I also saw J R O T C. Yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff being sold, and again, somebody is selling it. Now, of course, maybe it's a service member that sold, uh, you know, his or her uniform. That's possible. But for tens of thousands of official gear and apparel and uniforms being sold, not just in this one store, but in all the stores throughout California and through every state of the union. I mean, there's yeah. a there's a big player involved, and that big yeah. player is Uncle, Uncle Sam, the government. So that's the tricky issue with Stolen Valor. And uh, so I'm not saying to not address, not confront legitimate Stolen Valor. I think that if if there's a legitimate Stolen Valor, you should confront it or, or you should notify uh, the authorities if, um, you know, if you're not if you're not that type of you know confrontational person and of course if you're you know you don't want to get violent with these people because then you I mean you yourself don't want to commit a crime in addressing stolen valor you want to make sure about that I've seen people uh, service members commit crimes just so uh, they could yell you know stolen stolen valor so that's you, know, you got to be very careful about that uh, but bottom line you should take a step back before you start yelling stolen valor think about the situation and think about who's really responsible because in either case um legitimate or not legitimate when you do yell stolen valor or address stolen valor you're going downstream you're always going downstream the upstream folks that's the united states government i hate to say it but it's the truth because without the united states government we wouldn't have a surplus industry